Hi again guys, in today's video I'll be showing you the new Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro Special Edition wireless mouse. So this mouse is a special edition version for the fact that it does have that Qi charging compatibility. So if you do have the Corsair MM1000 or any other like Qi compatible charging devices around the house, you will be able to charge this one with that. This one does come in at a price point of £99.99. .99 whilst the non chi compatible one does have a retail of $89.99. So there is a little bit of a difference in the price points, but we do have the special edition here to review. So let's get it unboxed and check it out. On the front of the packaging is where you'll find the image of the product. And then on the rear of the packaging is where you'll find your key specifications and more information about it. On the inside, is where you'll find your quick start guide, your warranty leaflet, and pretty much everything that you need to set it up. Inside of the box is where you'll find your 1.8 meter braided cable, which is a USB-C to a USB 3.0 type A cable. And this will enable you to charge your mouse. With this mouse as well, you do get an additional side panel so you can switch out the default one if you prefer. And you also get the wireless receiver to help connect the mouse wirelessly. And then finally you get the mouse itself. So one of the first things that I noticed when it came to the Dark Core Pro mouse is its size. So the dimensions for this is 127 millimeters in length by 89 millimeters in width by 43 millimeters in height. So it is rather a large mouse. This is coming from someone as well who uses the Corsair Glaive daily and that itself is a pretty large mouse. But I don't know, this one just seemed to be a lot bigger. It still does have the same three black uh, plastic looks to it. So you've got your shiny plastic, your matte plastic and your textured plastic as well. So they haven't changed really the way it looks in that sense. There is a thumb rest on the left hand side of it and then the ability as well to change the right side panel with the additional side rest that's included. So this is going to be really good if you have a different preference with your grip type. So whether you're a palm rest grip type or a claw grip type, it means that you'll be able to find a way that's suitable and more comfortable for you when using the mouse. Just underneath the right panel as well is where you can actually go ahead and place your wireless receiver. So that's really cool because it means that if you're not using the wireless receiver at that moment in time, you can just tuck it away nicely in there and know that you're not going to lose it or anything like that. So I think that's a really cool feature and just keeping it nicely tucked away there. There are eight programmable buttons in total and you can actually go ahead and pick and choose what you want each button to do or by remapping them with the IQ software. Um, you have your left mouse button, your right mouse button, the button on top of the mouse, you have your clickable scroll wheel, you have the two buttons that are kind of embedded within the left mouse button slightly, and then the other two buttons that are located on the left side of the mouse. Then on the bottom of the mouse is where you'll find the toggle switch, which will allow you to either turn off the mouse um, have your 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode activated or your Bluetooth mode activated as well. So all of that is located at the bottom. This time with the Dark Core Pro version, it does definitely look a lot cleaner because they've just got the one toggle switch where on the other one there was the multiple toggle switches. And to be honest, like I said, it just looks a lot cleaner and a lot just nicer in general. The setup process was really simple to do. So it's just generally a matter of connecting the mouse uh, wired and then having the USB wireless receiver into your PC for the time being, just so you can do the firmware updates through the IQ software um, and generally just update the IQ software whilst you're there as well. Um, you can from here initiate the pairing process between the mouse and the USB wireless receiver and it will go ahead and tell you when you can remove the cable. And once that's done, you're pretty much set to go until there's another firmware update in which you do have to go ahead and plug in the cable again. So it is a little bit of a tedious process, but it really doesn't take very long at all. Performance wise, the mouse has 1 to 18,000 DPI with one DPI increments. And to be honest, I'm still yet to find somebody that will have their DPI this high. But let us know in the comments below if that is you. If you do have your DPI very high, 
I'm very, very interested to know. The polling rate of it is 1000 Hertz, but you can actually go ahead and manually change it to 2000 Hertz if you want to via the IQ software. Um, the good thing about this is once you've actually gone ahead and changed it, it will remember that you've changed it and it's not something that you have to do each time or anything like that. So the moment you close the IQ software, it still remembers it, so that's good. So in my off time, I do like to play some Call of Duty. Whilst originally I do use the Corsair Glaive Pro mouse, um, I was very interested to find out how this fared against it in terms of gaming. I was a little bit nervous for the fact that it is a new mouse and you get so familiar and so comfortable with your current peripherals that you have within your setup that getting something else can just be a bit like worrying, I guess. Um, so trying it out, to begin with, it did feel a little bit clunky and I felt that because of the, the largeness of the mouse, I felt that it did take me longer um, because my hand was just kind of trying to fit in a comfortable position and just generally just moving it and stuff as well. I could tell that it wasn't my original, more comfortable mouse that I was used to. Um, but then after a couple of matches, I did actually feel that my hand was just kind of subconsciously going into a position that was very comfortable. Um, and just generally, I did feel that it was very fluid when I moved it. I didn't feel that it like snagged on anything or just generally it was an effort for me to go ahead and use it. One of the main things that did take me a little bit longer to kind of get used to was the scroll wheel. Um, it is very prominent in the way it feels when you're increasing or decreasing it. So in game it can, to begin with, feel a little bit strenuous on your fingers and feel like a lot of effort. But after a while I did find that that kind of went away and I felt it to be more beneficial than a mouse that was very fluid in the way that the scroll wheel moved. Um, for the fact that there's been a lot of times I've been playing Call of Duty and I've gone to use the scroll wheel to change my weapon and I've actually gone straight past the weapon that I want to because I've completely overshot the increase and I've not been able to feel the notches of the change of the wheel maybe, um, but it's just one of those. So having the notch feelings in the mouse generally will help when it comes to choosing your weapons and everything in game. And then finally using it in the wireless modes for everyday tasks and obviously playing video games. I didn't feel that the mouse was lagging behind at all. I didn't feel that it struggled to keep up with any of the movements that I wanted to do as well. The battery that's inside is a rechargeable lithium polymer battery and in its 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode can last up to 16 hours with the LED lighting effects turned on. Um, and then up to 36 hours with the LED lighting effects turned off. And then in the Bluetooth mode, it can last up to 18 hours with the lighting effects turned on and then up to 50 hours with the lighting effects turned off. Um, personally, I've been using the mouse for around six to eight hours a day for the last couple of days and the mouse is just telling me that it's in low battery. Um, unfortunately, one thing I did notice is that it doesn't have a specific like percent. So you can't see how much percentage your battery has remaining. So it's literally just low, medium or high. So it is one of those, you kind of just have to charge and guess accordingly. Um, personally, I'd probably just wait until the bar goes red, but I guess it would be a nice addition if you could see the percentage remaining on the battery. Then finally, it's worth mentioning as well, in the IQ software, you can actually go ahead and enable the power saving mode for the mouse so you can preserve some battery where and when you can too. It also does have nine RGB zones so that you can actually go ahead and customize each one of these within the IQ software too. You can change a lot when it comes to the mouse. So you can reprogram the buttons to do whatever you want. You can change the lighting effects to match your setup. You can change DPI presets. You can surface calibrate. You can change the performance when it comes to like the pointer speed or any angle snapping. And just generally you can do a lot And then from the device settings section, this is where you'll initially pair your devices and update your firmware and obviously update your software too. Generally, I do find that this mouse does have a lot to offer, especially if you have the Qi charging compatible devices 
or the MM1000 mouse pad from Corsair, um, it means that you can actually go ahead and charge the mouse without having to use the charging cable that's provided. So that's really, really cool. Um, the fact that you've got the side panel that could be changed out depending on obviously which grip type you prefer and just generally the overall look and obviously the RGB there as well. The battery life as well is pretty decent. Um, it's a shame that obviously you can't see the battery percentage there, but maybe it's something that they can implement in the future with a new firmware update or something like that. Whilst there wasn't really much to dislike about the mouse, um, I do kind of have like a little niggle and it's just generally the hole at the front of the mouse. Um, so I, in one of my last reviews, mentioned how it would be good for companies to actually provide a tab or a cover to protect the slot that the charging cable goes into to prevent you from getting it clogged up with any dirt or dust or anything like that. Because um, obviously over time, if it is clogged up, you're not going to be able to charge your peripheral, you're not going to be able to do the firmware updates or anything, so then it's just rendered useless and you'll probably have to go and buy a new one. Um, but obviously with the tab, I do think it's just a really good idea because I feel like it would prolong the lifespan of peripherals. So guys, that is it from me for this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed to the BitTech channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn notifications on as well so you can see when the next video goes live. Thank you so much, guys. Have an awesome day and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.